and welcome to the EEPROM 9. And we're going to make this reasonably quick and consistent because I've only got a limited amount of memory on the car and the laptop's under the bed and I'm lazy. And it's really hot and humid which is why I'm not doing a full software demonstration as well because it's pretty... you get pretty uncomfortable moving computers out and in and out of cubby holes. So what we have here is basically the Vidi SP pack as it's known as, at least I think that is. I may be completely wrong. Now it came with two sets of discs. These are the genuine ones that would have come with it when it was brought. And these are basically the software for both the Unit 1 and 2 because this is basically a video capturing device for the Atari ST which can capture about 15 frames so you pretty much just capture stuff, screenshots and whatnot of your telly and games and whatnot, but you couldn't use it like you use screen captures today. And then we have a backup version which also seems to have a more modern version of it. I haven't actually looked at the contents of these discs because these discs have actually sample images that have been captured, only two. Now what it consists of are two units. First of all there's a cartridge unit which plugs into the side of the Atari ST using the underutilised cartridge port which has a few knobs for things like, I don't know, video knobs and then a video input which comes from the second unit which has a brightness and saturation, an external PSU which can also I think be resolved by using this which is goes into the joystick connector to provide power. The video here will go into this socket and there's also a serial port on the back, DB25. I don't have any of those cables which is a bit of a problem because it means I've been unable to test to see if this thing can actually capture anything so so far all tests have failed miserably. That's probably a power LED. I never got anything out of that. And that is a button that does something. I don't have instructions and the README is limited on it plus full. It's not the easiest thing to read on a standard resolution TV. So. Ah, Rumbo. That's who made it. You can't really find much of this online. I'll see if I can dig up the online resources of little of what we have found and put them there. But this was sent to me by Mr. Mark Fixes Stuff about a year ago. Yes, it takes me a long time to get round to doing videos. I know, shame on me. Let's show you inside them. Religious preachers. Yay. So let's have a look in the analog one first, which does the video image. Oh yeah, I forgot to put the video in for the actual video input. So we've got a lot of analog television chips, including Sony. Now, frankly, I can't be bothered with going into data sheets and whatnot because I'm hot and humid. And on the other side, we have the good old analog delay line memory used quite often in error checking and whatnot of analog TV signals. So let's go on to the other unit. The digital side of the unit, we have. What looks to be a ROM could be also be a RAM chip, although more likely to be some sort of mask ROM, as it is a cartridge. And of course a necessary discrete logic with, of course it will have analog to digital converters, all that, that'll be at the front end around this area somewhere, as well as a whole load of, I think it's, yeah, 7.4 logic, loads of 7.4 jelly bean logic. Really, when it comes to these things, the magic's done in the software, not in the hardware. Still, rather quite interesting specimens, if you ask me, because I like my obscure, weird hardware and whatnot, and this certainly fits the bill. So, next part. So, since this it was Mark Fixer Stuff who hooked me up with that kit, I would like to send a big thank you, a massive, absolutely humongous, top quality British plug to the channel, annotations, links and whatnot will be there, and remember, subscribe to get your fix.